Cops of Reddit. What is the most stupid criminal you have ever met? Ah, uh, not a LEO here on Reddit. Ah, uh, but had a tweaker who was breaking into a neighbor's house claimed he lived at mine. I asked him to pet the dog if he did live there. The look on his face was priceless as he looked at the large German shepherd barking at him. I would have stopped the dog if he had the balls to pet it, but still, the look on his face still makes me laugh. Not a cop. But, my ex-brother-in-law. He was never very bright. But, he decided to rob a petrol station, gas station. Goes and carrying a knife. Walking right past some customers' vehicles. Including one with a big blue light on and words police plaster all over it and the two big guys in black uniforms in there. Not a cop, but used to be a Macy's loss prevention guy. We had three teens coming in with literally mountains of condoms in their pockets. Someone came to pick them up, but it wasn't a relative. Macy's policy is, if they stole under $100 then they can get picked up. These kids stole about $1,300 worth of clothes. The person who tried to come and pick them up was someone who stole from us before. The fact that the person who came to pick these kids up didn't expect that we weren't gonna be looking for her was fucking hilarious. Not a cop, but a security guard at a large casino. This woman flags me down and tells me she left $3,000 in a machine and went to the bathroom. Someone took the ticket and cashed out. After some investigating, we find that there were three guys, but one dude in a super obnoxious CA flag shirt with a matching CA flag hat kept all the money. We put out a bolo on the guy, hoping maybe we'd find him based on his face and physical descriptors. The next day, I clock in and start walking around. I'm cruising through a slot section, and I'll be damned, this dude is sitting there in the exact same outfit, with exactly 2k in his pocket and 1k in the machine. I couldn't believe it. Called for backup, detained the guy, the police came and arrested him. Easily the dumbest criminal I've met. The dude was genuinely surprised that we found him. Not caught, but my dad's a lawyer and one of his clients who was just out of jail at the time was feeling a little hungry but had no money. Naturally, he goes to the nearest deli and steals an entire roast chicken. Unfortunately for him, this Delin was a favorite of the local police and there were two officers right outside who immediately began to try to arrest him. Not wanting to give up his prize, he kept running frantically trying to eat as much of the chicken as he could before he got caught. Multiple witness and camera footage of this man sprinting up the high street clutching a whole chicken to his face. Not a cop, but grew up around criminals, so Eve had lots of interactions with them. My first stepdad was once arrested for selling stolen farm equipment, like massive tractors and shit, to an undercover officer. Several years later he was again arrested for the exact same crime, by the exact same officer, who was in disguise this time. Several years after that he was once again arrested for nearly the same crime, by the same officer, who was dressed as a woman. The only difference this time being that he was trying to sell stolen chain link fencing instead of tractors or whatever. Former US Border Patrol agent here, so this is a story from another agent I know up on the northern border. Local cops drop him off at the Border Patrol station because he was a Canadian citizen and was supplying alcohol to a minor. My buddy runs him and finds that he is a convicted child molester and had skipped out on his parole to another province. In Canada you can get out of your parole just by going to another province because they won't extradite you back to the province where you skipped out on parole. So my buddy thinks about it for a minute and decides to have him deported through the POE, port of entry, that will put him back into the province where he skipped out on parole. So the shitbag starts asking after a day why he hasn't been deported yet and it was explained to him that he was going on the next Connor flight to Buffalo, New York so he can be deported and go straight back to prison for his parole violation. Needless to say he wasn't too thrilled when the US Marshals came to pick him up and he realized he was really going back to prison. Lived in downtown Houston and had a dog door for my very large German Shepherd. One day an African American male, on the short end average size around like 5 foot 9 dash 10 hops the stone fence into the backyard. We had no clue what had happened until like 7 p.m. when I went out there to scoop the poops. Found blood everywhere. Checked the security cam and I got to watch my dog rip off the dude's fingers and eat them was metal as f, but I never called the cops. I was scared they would euthanize my dog. I'm sure that dude looks at his hand and thinks of my dog. Story from a cop, he and his partner were sent to interview a suspect involved in armed robbery out of state. They show up to his house and find him sitting on the porch. They call him by name and announce themselves as police officers. Then they say, do you know why we are here? The suspect says yeah, that armed robbery in Atlanta. The guy apparently was more worried about being seen as out of the loop than being seen as innocent. My cousin is a state trooper, and he had a funny story about a guy he caught running drugs on the interstate. 
One day, as he was about to head off duty, he saw a car going easily 100 miles per hour in the opposite direction, so he whipped around and eventually caught up to him and pulled him over. The first words out of the guy's mouth were, you can't pull me over. To which my cousin replied, um, I just did. After a search of the vehicle that yielded a pound of weed, a pistol with the serial number scratched off, some meth, and a notebook with his own rap lyrics, my cousin arrested the guy. While questioning him, he read some of his lyrics back to him including the line, Ain't no pig ever gone catch me. Feath police. Not a police officer, but victim of dumb criminal. Wife and I were babysitting a family friend's kids. We had driven separate cars from work and met at our friend's house. I am about to head home, and my wife is spending night with the kids as I hear a pickup truck squealing around the corner. It goes up on a curb, hits a mailbox onto the sidewalk around my wife's new car, down to the cul-de-sac, hitting more stuff, back around hits my car on opposite side of street bounces off of my car into my wife's car and up the street, takes out a street sign, just misses a fire hydrant. And then another car comes ripping into the neighborhood, and gets bummed by the pickup. The pickup drives to a yard and leaves neighborhood. I call cops, and go check on the car. Turns out it is an old Asian chef at a local eatery, and he was rear-ended by the pickup. So after the pickup took off, he chased him down. The police show up, take statements, and get the chef's car towed. We get a call an hour later, about 1 a.m., if the police can swing by. We said sure, and they basically came back to tell us that they had found the guy's car ditched on the green of a golf course, engine blown. They said they had found mail, including mailbox, in the back of the truck. New crime mail theft. But the best part. He had left his wallet and ID in the front seat. Apparently the guy lived about 10 miles from where he wrecked, so he walked half a mile to a gas station where he called police to file a police report of stolen vehicle. Police told him to hang tight, and they would beam him to the station to take report. So they picked the drunk up. Took him to station, he signed a police report for stolen car. Then they turned around and arrested him for Leaving scene of accident, first one, destruction of personal property, leaving scene of accident, mine and wife's car, Leaving scene of accident, first accident victim on second accident, failure to maintain control of car, might have referred him for mail theft, filing a false police report, public intox, and DUI after he admitted he was driving and it was not stolen. Oh yeah, he was broke, no car insurance and cost me a grand in uninsured motorist deductibles. I'm a part-time prosecutor. My town is small. About 10,000 and we have two undercover officers. They make 12 to 20 arrests on any given week. My paper keeps putting them on the front page. Literally, buy from anyone else and you're fine. But no, I see dozens upon dozens in court off of these two. We even made them police officer of the year three years back. No slow down. Ex-cop. A kid on my area, 14 or so who was a complete idiot. He was a thief, and a terrible one at that. He knew I would be in a particular shop, at the same time every day, sitting in a security office with the manager because of shoplifting. He knew this because I'd already caught him about four times. On this occasion he had seen me walking in. And he still filled his pockets with sweets and walked out. I followed him out and he was with his dad. I smiled and his dad rolled his eyes immediately and cuffed him round the back of the head. I gave him a few chances, more than I should have done. Partly because of his age, and partly because his family were dirt poor and couldn't afford fines or to get him to community service. But that was the final straw unfortunately. I've been gone a few years, so hopefully he has finally got a brain cell. Not a cop, but had the privilege of witnessing this. I was duty manager of a food store at the time when a junkie guy walks in, picks up a basket and proceeds to fill it with 5 pound blocks of cheese. I see this and stand by the exit waiting for him to try and leave, just as a police officer walks into the store. I point out the shoplifter and he starts a conversation with the guy, asks his name and then asks if he's making a large mac and cheese for the family. Guy looks like he's about to pass out and tries to abandon the basket and leave. But no no James, you've got a family to feed with that macaroni and cheese. He then puts his arm around the guy, takes him to the checkout and makes him pay for 50 pound worth of cheese. Guy came back 20 minutes later trying to return it all and got laughed out of the store. She wasn't a criminal or really that dumb, but I was stopped while getting lunch by a woman in distress. Oh thank goodness you're here officer, I need help. I'm not a street cop on this day, rather I'm working for a mega industrial utilities facility. I notice she's parked in a fire lane, but it's not my jurisdiction, so I figure I'll help where I can and get some preliminary facts for the proper agency in case she's in real trouble. Okay, what's going on? She starts saying that she believes Qualcomm is channeling their communications network through her Kia. I look over at her car and notice two cats inside, crawling over the typical hoarder garbage strewn about. 
She's mid-40s if not older, yet she's dressed like a teenager walking out of a Van Halen music video. A hot pink tight tee, 80s plume hair, heels and white pants, but it's before Labor Day so I think nothing of it. Why do you think Qualcomm is channeling their communications network through your Kia? Well, there's a new tower they built behind my house. Ever since then I've had problems with my cell phone, my radio reception, and my hair's been standing on end. She shows me her arm and sure enough every hair is standing at full attention. Where's her house? She dodges the question. I can't get any sleep, I think I'm hearing voices when I'm alone, and I think they're trying to take over my car. Okay, ma'am. I understand your concerns, but I'm going to tell you why that's impossible, so hear me out. First, your car doesn't have nearly enough power to run a transmitter like those on that tower. Even if it did, it doesn't have the equipment or computational power to repeat a signal, let alone process one. I start going over frequencies and communications bands, and how none of the equipment in her car can talk to those towers beyond pinging for GPS coordinates. The stereo system doesn't even have a transmitter, Bluetooth is super short range, yada yada. Her eyes glazed over. I told her to maybe look into getting a wideband frequency scanner so she can see what's being transmitted and received by her car. Well, where can I find one? I'm not sure, maybe try to find a ham radio operator for him. Okay, where's that? Do you have an address? No, it's, they're hobbyists, you'll have to search the internet for a message board. Okay, what's the website? Jeez. Long story longer, I made my retreat and called the locals for a possible mental break as I lamented about my cold food. Guy committed a commercial break and enter. He used a hacksaw to cut a hole in the roof. He actually had to cut two holes as the first hole went into a stairwell, but the second accessed the office space. I guess he got hot up there doing all that cutting because he took his coat off. Once he got inside dropping to the floor he couldn't get back up. Ran out the back door setting off alarms. I found his identification in his coat pocket. He was well known to us. Pretty dumb but most that get caught are. Not me, but my boyfriend is a cop and the city he works in has a family that is all kinds of messed up. The mom is diabetic so the father convinced the mom that swallowing his semen would cure her diabetes. Safe to say, they got a call out to the house with the mom almost going into a diabetic seizure slash coma. The son also has been trespassed from the university, which is a major state university so you know it's a problem, for riding his bike to campus and harassing the female students. The initial call came in as someone is in my backyard stealing my weed. Sure enough the reporting person, RP, had six or seven massive cannabis plants in his backyard. Each about six to eight feet high. Caught the guy trying to steal one and chopped down one of the plants with an axe and was literally carrying around the huge plant. He was caught about two streets over and you could just follow the cannabis leaves. Funny thing was the RP got charged with a more serious offense than the thief for cultivation of cannabis, and the thief only got done for unlawfully on premises because you can't get done for stealing something that is illegal. Not a cop, I work for a New York style pizza shop, but hear me out. We make 12 inch 18 pies for delivery that go in boxes, and then we make slice pies to sell pizza by the slice. Slice pies are usually somewhere around 25 inch, so the slices are big. DoorDash calls in an order for a pizza, except they want one slice of the pizza different than the rest. Okay, pita, but we'll do it. DoorDash guy comes to pick it up high as fuck, and while he's there orders a slice for himself. On the way to his delivery, eats the one different slice in the box, and attempts to replace it with the giant slice of cheese pizza he got for himself. Customer sent us a picture of a giant slice of pizza attempted to be wedged into the missing space in the box. This is the exact kind of psychotic criminal behavior reefer madness tried to warn us about, if only we had listened. My criminal justice teacher told me the best one I've heard so far. Back when he was a cop he took a burglary call, goes to the call and guy tells him this person stole a little over a pound of weed from him. Tells him who it is, where he lives and asks him to go arrest him. So he goes and arrests him and call the victim and says I think I have your weed but I need you to come down to the station and identify it. So naturally dude is thrilled drives down sees his weed thanks my teacher and confirms yes 100% that is mine. So my teacher arrests him. Oh god, too many I can't remember, 90% of them. The list is endless. The quick off the head ones, guy said they couldn't be speeding because they were too high, ended in a DUI. Guy said he didn't have any weed in the car or on and when I saw a baggie sticking out of a shoe. Arrested. Guy said he didn't have any drugs on him when I was staring intently at his head where he had a large bag of cocaine sticking out of his hat. Arrested. Guy got shot in the groin at noon in a very public area, over a weed deal and he was adamant not to press charges. Warrant later, he himself went to jail for several charges. I walked up, walked up in full uniform not being sneaky, on a guy busting into cars during 10am with a crowbar and he tried to say it was his, 
I guess hoping I didn't see the other five cars with broken windows too. I was just trying to get coffee. He got tasered, obviously arrested. Some a-holes stole a fire truck while they were doing CPR at a Section 8 housing area. Same place, same guy, different time, they broke the windows and stole all the firefighters' phones and wallets. That one just pissed me off, but we caught him thanks to a Find My Phone app, and his fingerprints matched from both crimes. Less stupid haha, more of I hate you as a person stupid. I've had many of the V's are in my pants, guys after finding drugs, to which the reply of why are you in some other dude's pants? Shuts them down or they admit they are their pants, which ends up being a great guilt admission. Other officers were in a foot chase down the street, and I followed behind a guy in my squad car, telling him over the intercom as soon as he wears out I'm getting out my car and he can't outrun me or fight me at that point. He was dumb because he didn't beeline into a backyard and stayed on the road while I slow rolled behind him. Someone who broke into a house gave up thinking we had a dog and would release it. It was me making my trainee bark loudly. More haha dumb. Not a cop, but at my last job where I was a manager, I did get a drunk lady arrested when she came through my drive through twice. We used to have a second drive through lane until a drunk driver smashed it, and one of my crew noticed the car just chilling there. A few minutes later, one of my crew grabs me and says this lady is at the window and not talking to them. I headed to the drive through window to see this lady yelling at someone, and I try to get her attention. She just mumbles, grabs a bottle out of one of those liquor store bags, and puts it on her seat. Then she drives away before I can get her plate number. Two hours later, I'm on the phone with another manager, and my crew grabs me saying the lady is back. This time she's actually talking, mumbling about an order that didn't match anything on the screen. So I told her to park where we have people wait if they have a large order, and she just nods and heads there without paying. Until then, I wasn't entirely sure if she was drunk or mentally ill, so I called the cops. Just as a cruiser pulled in, she drove out of the spot and around to the drive through again, so I point her car out to him, and he pulls her over at the drive through window and she stumbles out. Turns out the person I thought she was yelling at earlier was her little dog, this cute little puck. Wound up having two cop cars, a tow truck, and animal control to take care of this lady. I felt so bad for the poor little dog. Edit, one of the cops asked if we had anything for the dog and she wound up feeding him french fries. Not really healthy for the dog, the animal control guy wasn't too happy apparently, but it was super cute. Late to the party, but one of my favorites. Guy got kicked out of a bar slash after hours club by security. Claims he'll be back and about 30 minutes later he comes around the corner shooting at security. They dogpile him and cuff him. My partners and I were about a block away, got there, and tossed him in a back seat. Dude never left frame on the cameras from the time he started shooting until I put him in my back seat and tried to claim it wasn't him. Same club different idiot. Tried to get past security without a pat down because he had a gun on him. Security hits him with mace, he takes his gun out and starts waving it around. I'm driving past as the call is coming out and pull up on him ditching a gun in the dumpster. Take him into custody and he claims it's not his gun, not unusual there, and says that his martial arts skills kicked in when he was attacked by security and he disarmed one of them. I know all the security guards up there and which ones are armed, only one, found her and could see her gun still secured in her holster. Didn't help that this was not the first time Dingus tried to ditch a gun on me. AM Cop To make a long story slightly less long, the suspect was living in a vacant mansion atop a cliffside. The homeowner travels frequently only stays at the property when he's in town. He came home to find his sliding door unlocked. He checked his security cameras and finds someone had entered the home and hadn't left, so he proceeds to call the police. We arrive, get the story and open the sliding door to be met with a very strong odor of marijuana. As we begin clearing the house, we begin to enter the last room, which happens to overlook the cliff. As we begin to make entry to a den-like area with a full bathroom, we hear a shower running and someone singing very loudly. We call out for him to come out, hands in sight. The water and singing stops, we call out again, no answer. We enter the room, clear the bathroom and find no one, but the sliding door leading to a balcony suspended about 12 feet over cliffside is wide open. We look over the banister and see only trampled brush. In disbelief that this guy basically jumped off a cliff to avoid the police we asked for the helicopter to search the cliffside to see if there was an injured person at the base or anywhere nearby, negative. As we look about the room, on the counter are two mason jars full of the devil's lettuce, or giggle bush if you prefer, a bottle of San Pellegrino, and a box of half-eaten Hawaiian pizza from a local pizza joint that some of coppers of the area frequent. Next to that box was a receipt for the pizza that he had ordered and delivered. On the bottom of that receipt was the name of the person who ordered slash paid for the pizza, did some quick police work on police computers and eventually found the guy who matched the guy in the security video. He was caught later as he limped his way down a street that was further down the hills. 
TLDR burglar has personal party with personal pizza in someone else's house, jumps off a cliff when police come to join. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe the channel for more exciting stories. You have to get out of the matrix, so watch our other videos right now. Stop chilling on your couch just like that. Get on with it.